Rashi Rice and Wanya Moore is heading over to, oh, no big deal, just those Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs. And here to talk all about it is Chris Clark, co-host over at the Locked On Chiefs podcast. Before we get to that, I want to let you know that all of our Locked On NFL draft coverage is brought to you by friends over at Ultimate Football G. M. You can find you you think that you can run an NFL franchise. Well, make sure that you visit ultimate GM today to get started so that you can try out the ultimate NFL GM simulation game. Start your dynasty today. Chris, let's start off with the selection of Rashi Rice, a wide receiver that I think some saw as a day two guy. It's an opportunity now to team up with Patrick Mahomes. Is he somebody that you feel like has an immediate impact or maybe starts one place in the rookie season and then maybe develops over time? So based on the way Andy Reid seems to develop wide receivers, I don't think he's going to have a huge impact in year one. Uh, it's not, I'm not going to say he's not going to play at all. Uh, you look at what Sky Moore did last year. And the other thing, I think there's some similarities between Sky Moore and Rishi Rice, not necessarily mm -hmm. in the way they play. But really, in if you think about, it, they're coming from a lower level of competition than normal NCAA players. So I think that also plays into how this is going to be uh, dealt with. And I think Sky Moore, if I remember correctly, was drafted 54 overall. Rice went 55 to Kansas City. <laughs> yeah. So kind of interesting there. Uh, I do think that he's potentially going to be there starting to X wide receiver. The Kansas City moves their wide receivers around. Mm -hmm. uh, I just don't think he's going to be there this year. Uh, but you know. We'll see if he can step in and he shows that he can know the offense. That's the biggest thing with Reed is you have to know all three wide receiver positions so that, he, that they can move you around and do uh, whatever they want at the wide receiver position. So that's going to be something to watch. Now, Rashi Rice, of course, was a big time standout in Mobile, Alabama during the Senior Bowl. How much do you think the Senior Bowl has had an impact on uh, guys like Rashi Rice when it comes to the NFL draft? Well, I think it's huge. I think Kansas City looks at the Senior Bowl and they go and they draft guys based on how they play in the Senior Bowl because that's the best competition uh, at that level. So I, I do think that it's a big thing for Kansas City to look at, and I think it's a big thing for the NFL to look at. I think that, uh, you know, a guy like Rice that's coming in playing against SMU, you know, in the AAC, uh, going up against more competition that is playing, you know, in the, in the Big Five, the Power Five conferences, mm -hmm. uh, that gives him an ability to kind of showcase what he can do and I think that's very important for those types of players. Yeah. And then you look at, um, you know, later on in the draft, they move up again. They moved up for Rashi Rice. Then Kansas City moves up. They needed help over at the, on the offensive line. And they grab offensive tackle out of Oklahoma, Juan Yamora, six foot five, 307 pounds, 35 inch arms. This guy feels like the prototypical offensive tackle. How does he end up contributing to the Kansas City Chiefs? Is this an immediate one or is this something that also takes a little bit of time to, to find its place? Well, he's been working with Big Duke and uh, Kansas City has now drafted four of those guys, I believe, over the last couple of seasons. So I think that that's going to be something to watch. Uh, he's going to have competition with Lucas Niang. Lucas Niang is right now penciled in as a starter at right tackle. Uh, you know, Morris could be the, right the starting right tackle by the time the season starts, depending on how things go. Niang's had some injury issues, so that's going to be something to watch. Uh, but, you know, the other side of it is Kansas City does need a tackle for a swing tackle. So, mm. you know, if he if he can't contribute as a starter this year, maybe he's just their swing tackle this year. That's still a valuable position uh, to have on your offense. So definitely something to watch there. I do think that there's a possibility he starts, uh, especially with Niang's injury history. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just going to be interesting to see how that plays out. But it's interesting because – you know, Creed Humphrey played at Oklahoma. Wanya Morris is now from Oklahoma. But Wanya Morris also played with Trey Smith. And Wanya Morris was a left tackle at Tennessee mm -hmm. when Trey Smith was a left guard at Tennessee. So he already kind of knows some of the guys that he's going to be playing with on the offensive line. So that's going to be interesting to see how that works out. And he's already played next to Trey Smith as well. So uh, a lot of familiarity there already. You mentioned him working out with Big Duke. That's, of course, Duke Mannyweather, who is an offensive line specialist. So you get somebody that's worked with one of the best in the game. You get him with guys that he's familiar with. Even for a swing tackle role early on, that familiarity with the guys on the offensive line is really important because those six offensive line jumbo sets that require that swing tackle to come in are just becoming more and more present in today's NFL, how does that factor into the Kansas City offense? How often do they use those sort of jumbo sets? They don't use the jumbo sets a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. They use them kind of more on the goal line at, from, time, at, from time to time, and I will say that they kind of use it more as a trick play, getting tackle eligible mm -hmm. uh, down near the goal line more often than not. Uh, but they have used it in the past, so it's going to be something to watch, see if that's possible 
uh, in a way they, they go that direction this year. But I'm really curious to see if they use it more this year going forward because one of the things that they don't have the roster right now, and it's possible to add somebody, but they don't have a fullback. Kansas City is generally carried a fullback most seasons. They don't have one right now. Is it possible they're going to start using jumbo a jumbo package more, or are they going to have more of their tight ends on the field at the same time and use one of those guys in that specific role? That's going to be something to watch as well. Now, Chris, you know I'm a big-time fan of the fullback, but we know that the fullback would probably be an undrafted free agent, maybe a Hunter yep. Lipke later on in the draft. So you got Felix and Yudike Uzama. You've got Rashi Rice, the wide receiver out of SMU. Felix and Yudike Uzama, of course, the edge rusher out of Kansas State. Then you add Oklahoma offensive tackle Wanya Morris. Where do the Kansas City Chiefs go next as they look to day three? You know, honestly, you start looking at this roster and it's just a matter of who falls to you. Mm. Uh, where do you feel the best available player is? If you look last year, and this is something that I really thought they did really well, they trade up or they went and got Darian Kennard. Uh, he dropped to the fifth round. Nobody thought he was going to be there. Trey Smith the year before was in the sixth round. Kennard hasn't played for Kansas City, but he looks to be a guy that could possibly be a very uh, big contributor on the interior of the offensive line maybe after Joe Tooney leaves in a year or two. Uh, so that's something to watch there. But, you know, you're going to need all those interior guys regardless. You need to have backups. Uh, so that's an important position. But when you start looking at what Kansas City needs, they could be looking at another wide receiver. They could look at tight end. They could look at, you know, offensive tackle. They could still be trying to bring in more guys there. Defensively speaking, I don't think they're going to be looking at corner. They could look at safety, uh, you know, wide receiver, tight ends. I don't think they'll look at running back. Maybe they draft a QB late. That's always a, a question with Andy Reid. Is, is he going to look at a QB late? Uh, especially considering if you think about Blaine Gabbard is only here on a one-year deal, and it's not mm -hmm. like what they have done in the past with uh, Chad Henney's contract, where it's $4 million a year. Blaine Gabbard's deal is basically league minimum. So you have to wonder, is he even going to be in Kansas City? I would think he's going to be. But if they find a guy that they like, that they think they can develop, maybe Blaine Gabbard isn't here in mm -hmm. 2023. Lots of avenues, lots of directions, lots of different roads that the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs can take. And hey, I guess that's what happens when you're the champions. If you want to keep up with the Kansas City Chiefs, make sure you're checking out Locked On Chiefs every single Monday through Friday, your daily podcast. Keep me up to date with everything Kansas City Chiefs. And of course, you can find that here in the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Chris, absolute pleasure, buddy. Thanks for being here.